Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I'm excited to have with me Miss Mary Bruce Clemens, and she is the industrial control technician at TW Controls, as well as an alternative education enthusiast. So welcome, Mary. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Hope you're doing well today. I am. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Now we love these conversations to get started by learning about your journey. So I'm excited to hear about yours, Mary. Absolutely. It's been vast and varied. Um, I, it's good to start things in the beginning, right? Yep. When I was a, a kid, I had always had a, a pretty incredible interest in things that seemed like they were not for me. Um, an interest in the underbelly of, of pretty much all objects and how they functioned and why they functioned and who brought it up and who made all those things kind of go into a path where we now have the things that make our lives easier. Um, I was not a great test taker. I was not great at sitting still. I was not great at school. I was not really great at any of the stuff that a young kid was supposed to be doing. Um, but I was great at finding things that were not uh, for my age group yet. So taking things apart was always something that I enjoyed. Um, when you see kids doing that, you're like, okay, that's great. Let's get them in some some classes about math and science and technology. Nah. Um, and it just didn't capture enough for me that kept my interest. So I just assumed that I was bad at it. Um, as I get older, um, I take the easiest route possible to get an education, <laughs> kind of, not the easiest route possible. Um, but I wanted very much to be involved in science, uh, but I was not very good at math and science and math are very closely related. Uh, I found art. Art seemed to be the best possible scenario for me because through art, science happens. Science happens through art also. It's kind of a, a tattletale type situation. Mm -hmm. If it can't be solved with science, it can be solved with art and vice versa. Um, so chose that thinking that I could avoid having to do calculations or measuring of any kind. And I was completely wrong. Every project that I did required a lot of explanation, a lot of backtracking, a lot of math. Uh, and I was like, dang, I could have just <laughs> could have just gone for what I really wanted to do and saw this as an after story. Um, part of that that relationship was basically just thinking if you're if you're good at something or bad at something you know we choose the things that we're good at because doing things that we're bad at feels awful and it's hard to think about getting better at those things as you get older um in my art career studying studying pretty much how other people did it how other people got there you know we've got michelangelo and leonardo da vinci and things like that popping off those are exciting to learn. Those guys straddled the fence between art and science from the very beginning. You know, we don't think about that when we're young. As we get older, we're like, that's all they were doing was just trying to find a way to communicate how intense their brains were. How do I tell somebody what I'm thinking? How, how are they going to believe it? I got to draw it out. I have to I have to show someone so someone else in the group that also has a mechanical mind can say, nah, that's going to work. Let's do it. And then you get a party together and then you build the thing. I think that that's probably a good start on not making a complete thought. So maybe, maybe a redirection of the question would be great. No, I think you're all over it. So what I, maybe go now to, okay, you finished the school. What, what were your next steps? Maybe what, what were some career spots that you, that, that you, that you stopped at that led you to, you know, now you're in TW controls, you're in the manufacturing automation support type of role. So maybe just a couple of those spots would be a cool place to go. The education piece, I think you covered well. Great. Um, went to school to be a teacher, realized that I was not able to teach. I was not able to teach in an effective manner. Um, that what I wanted to do wasn't related to that um, through teaching art. I'm not passionate about art. I'm passionate about the science part of it. Um, and to teach art, you have to really, really not think in a binary fashion. So it was still a reach. Art was still a reach, more of a reach than probably science would have been to, to begin with. Okay. Um, first job I could get out of school was selling motorcycles at a local Harley Davidson dealership. And I realized how much I love learning about machines and how much I knew already how much they worked. Like I didn't have to study it. It just made sense. Um, I mean, that's a huge breakthrough, you know, to figure out at 21 that you love machines and you can guess how they work. That's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and I 
didn't have time to consume that information, had to get a job that paid more consistently than selling motorcycles and ended up in the insurance and finance industry, which is math all day long. It is math nonstop. And so in doing math and realizing that I'm not actually bad at math, I just don't like tests because someone else is telling me what to do. I realized, okay, I don't need to be scared of math. I can lean into that. You know, I'm, I'm good at it. There's another way we can do this. It's a whole story to try to find, and this is one of your questions that is coming up, but uh, how do you change fields? And so that's pretty much where I was. I needed to change fields. I was not where I'd already learned everything that I needed to know about insurance. It's not going to change for another hundred years. Mm -hmm. So I'm done on that. I have to stay mentally engaged. I have to keep learning. What do I do now? So in between there, uh, trying to find a way to get out of the insurance industry, but still bring what I had as far as a, as a stepping stone, because that's a lot of information that nobody wants to learn. And I already know, and I can speak pretty enthusiastically about, um, I find I drove past the nonprofit that was already functioning. It was called Maker Mart. And I could tell by the hand painted sign on the window that whatever's in there is for me. Um, it was the font really it goes back to steam, the art in, in the communication. So I, I find out I do a reverse search on Google with the address, find out what's going on in there. And basically it's a nonprofit that's dedicated to teaching kids as early as eight years old about manual literacy, which is all the stuff that we, that I wanted so badly, but was not for whatever situation I was in. It did not happen. It did not fall in front of my lap. Um, so I became involved there and uh, eventually got hired on to work full time there as programming and um, doing all kinds of stuff, educating, fundraising, uh, keeping volunteers together, all of these different facets. And through that, I became introduced to TW Controls and through their TW Controls is pretty dedicated to outreach and help with their community. And so I was drowning in work. I did not know how to fix machines, but I had them. I needed the machines so I could teach the kids how to cut stuff. Um, and I was able to call TW controls to pretty much come, like if I had a bandsaw down within 10 minutes, a, a bearing would be in front of me to repair <laughs> the bandsaw and it would be replaced. Like, no problem. See you later. Bye. Um, COVID hits and that whole, that whole nonprofit, uh, ended up having to go through a terminal change. Um, and through that, I'm sitting there commiserating with my friends, Tim and Amber, and I'm like, I need a job. <laughs> like, let's talk really seriously. I love this stuff and I want to learn. I love anything having to do with how things operate. Um, I'm good at keeping information in my brain for long periods of times about machines. What can I do? Like, you need me to take the trash out? Like, what can we do? And pretty much my boss, Tim, any door that I want to walk through, he's like, let me open it. Like, let's, let's find out what you want to do. And so that has been absolutely miraculous in trying to learn an entirely new field that I was not, I never could have guessed that I'd be doing what I've been doing since the beginning of January. Um, being able to go into plants, being able to build, being able to use power tools every day. I couldn't ask for a more dream scenario. Also working essentially alone. Are you kidding me? I don't have a team of people I have to communicate with. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> it's great. You're your own, you're effectively, you're in charge of making sure that you do what you need to do and that you do it correctly. Um, and that's a fantastic thing to do. Well, I mean, this hats, first of all, hats off. That's a lot to unpack. Your story is amazing. You know, you, but you, you you're following your passion. Love Tim and Amber, by the way, for our listeners out there, be, be sure to go back and check out Tim's uh, hero as well as his idea episodes. Uh, he just, phenomenal guy i uh, love what they're doing uh you know just trying to build up the next generation and it just sounds like you know you, you've landed in just a dream scenario for you and, and uh, yes. it's just wonderful i mean i i can tell you it's the a, a lot of the heroes we talked to had that engineering or or had that passion to, you know for electrical you know the whole time i, I love your story because you know it you just took a completely different path. We have not heard a, a journey like this ever. So it's been, it's a really neat one for, for me personally, just to hear, Hey, I was going down this path, but I, I learned my passion was over here. So how do I get over there? I, I need to do things intentionally to get there and hats off to you for doing that. Thank you. There was one step that I forgot that was actually, it was 
absolutely crucial. And that was um, prior to, to really diving in into insurance, which was a, a family related thing, which is the only reason I got there is because I have a lot of insurance people in my family. But there was a job that I had for about a year and a half where I was a compounding pharmacy technician. And basically, I was in charge of an entire lab where I made I made medicines, um, testosterone, uh, progesterone, all these different types of medicines for animals. And basically, you are guesstimating materials and how they'll mix together and how they'll suspend in each other. Um, doing a lot of math, a lot of measuring, a lot of do overs, chucking it if it's not right. Is this thing that I make going to give somebody some extra hairs? I don't know. Maybe we should start over. Right. That kind of stuff. Yeah. So that tactile destination of being in a, in a scientific environment, uh, realizing that about six months in that the pharmacist knows that you're going to do it correctly. Cause you, that's what, that's what time has told. Mm -hmm. You start to get a little bit nervous. You're like, I don't even know. I was never told that I could do this stuff. I was never told that I could do it. I don't know if I'm right. You know? Mm -hmm. So a lot of that self-doubt, but that self-discovery happens with just by getting out of your comfort zone. Right. Right. And just existing out of it for long periods of time. No, no, so far as getting at your comfort zone, maybe speak to to the listener out there who maybe they're they're where you were when you were getting ready to go to college, and you're they're trying to figure out that next step. Any advice? You know, what what, what would you tell someone to to really help them get figure out their personal path? Volunteer. Like if somebody says I have a project this weekend and you don't know how to do what they're doing, say hey, can I come by and just hold a shovel for you or something and just watch how they're doing it. Um, there's a bunch of industry in the area that not industry, but a, a bunch of initiatives that need physical help and you learn by proxy. So it's not that you're volunteering, you're doing a barter. So you're bartering information that someone else can teach you in a fun way that is not staring at a YouTube screen. You're being involved in a community, you're helping a local effort, but you're also being taught by a leading contractor what, what to do with what, mm -hmm. um, and just by showing up, you'll end up with something because a lot of people don't show up at all. Right. And so just by existing in the space, you, you're going to receive something. I mean, and how about just like getting, you know, volunteering for sure, but just talking to people too. be intentional about, you know, learning, you know, what people do and, and what they're passionate about. Cause you may find your passion through, through, through a conversation with someone at a church or some, or someone at the grocery store. Right. You just never know. Uh, but if you're intentional about asking questions and I guess humble yourself enough to, to, to ask the question. So you don't, you go in actually wanting to learn that, that, that could be a path there as well. I'm assuming everybody, everybody you talk to probably knows something that you don't. So asking smart people just in that, asking anybody, any kind of question is probably going to get you somewhere with it. Mm -hmm. For sure. My favorite God. slogan is ask smart people, dumb questions, which is great. That's it. I mean, you know, make sure you're never the smartest person in the room. If, if not, if you are find another room, right. You know, there's, there's all yeah. sorts of things to, to, to think about, but I mean, just be intentional. Uh, I love your advice, you know, on that for sure. And, you know, when you think about the industry that you're in, you know, sometimes the hardest part about getting people excited about industry in general is they have this perception of what it is. So if you wanted to just take something right now and just say, hey, th this is completely wrong, you know, you may, I'm sure you, you probably could, could hang on the rim on this one. So wh what would you say to people there? It is. It's wrong. Whatever you're thinking, it's wrong. Until you get in there, it's completely different. I thought it was going to be a pretty uncomfortable space. My parents have had the, you know, I'm, I guess what I'm thinking about is inside an actual plant, uh, what it looks like. I think that that's a huge barrier when my dad would come home and tell me stories about the plant that he worked in, I had, I had a whole configuration of how that thing was set up and what it would do and everything completely off, not even close. Um, even the uh, social culture within a factory seems to be something I'm coming from a, a female perspective, but it seems to be something that would be uh, it's a thought, you know, what's it going to be like in there for me? Uh, and it's completely not what I thought it was going to be. Uh, less contentious than walking down the street in DC or, you know, in rural America. Right. Uh, so it's, it's an incredible thing to actually see how those things function inside. Mm -hmm. For sure. On a personal level, seeing how other people have set up extremely efficient systems by just moving one thing from one place to another, like, let's say this machine works better if this machine is moved 10 feet closer or 
just those finite revisions over time as you go in plants is really fun to see just on a human level. Like, okay, well, they've improved this process by 10 minutes. Well, how, how can I do that with my day? If I move breakfast, if I move breakfast 10 minutes closer to this, then am I going to have, you know, a 30 minute overage of time, which would be great. So learning how those things kind of function together, you can kind of see those physical components line up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if industry will ever release more information on what they're like behind their doors because there's a lot of trade secrets involved in that. Um, but I think even for myself, even though I just went in a plant earlier today, when I think of factory, <laughs> I think of kids underneath machines, like from the industrial revolution, I still think they're like down there and pushing pedals and stuff. And it's, it's hard to reconcile what we've seen in our history books, what we have not been corrected on and what we have not been updated on, on how these things work and where we're at now. Yeah. I mean, even though a lot of those factories do have proprietary stuff, I, I think just finding, I, I was talking to a guest uh, recently and, and she was, she got an opportunity to take her two sons to these, I think, three different manufacturing plants. And she, she basically lined up a tour, right? So, I mean, obviously, if, there's, if there are things that you can't show as a manufacturer, got to respect that. But have yeah. those days, you know, those options to bring in a second grade class to, you know, have them experience, put on the safety glasses and maybe the hair net and, you know, all the things you get to do when you go into a manufacturing plant and just, just expose them, give that, that, that exposure to what, what exists. I think that'd be a cool way to, uh, to do it. She actually did it just as a mom, just, Hey, I want to introduce my kids. So that's a one-on-one -on -one way to do it. But uh, it sounds like it's something that you're, you would agree with. Absolutely. There's no way that you can anticipate it. You know, we could be shown uh, those same pictures over and over and over. It, the two dimensional feeling does not translate. So when you go to a place and you get to see in the round what they're doing and how they're doing it, what textures they're doing it with, um, being in that space, it gives you a little bit of a, of a passion for it. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned that you're that, that, that alternative education enthusiast. You know, when you think through that, you know, is, is that when you're happiest, when you're, when you're working with people to, to learn differently and coming up with those programs and those initiatives and those types of uh, ways to move forward? I am passionate about it, but it is not where I'm happiest. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm happiest doing the work. And that was mm -hmm. kind of the part between that clerical. I had 11 years doing uh, advocating for people and trying to find problems, uh, trying to find solutions to problems that seemed solutionless. All of that stuff is fantastic, but I actually prefer to just go pick up a drill and be left alone. <laughs> so yeah, just, just how it goes. You're the doer. I got it. I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Task, task person. Need tasks. Need that need that list that you walk through. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Any 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 mentors that's come on? You've already mentioned Tim and Amber. It sounds like there's they, there's some great mentors there that you like to uh, give some recognition to. Yeah, yeah. My old executive director, uh, Aaron Ray Dykstra, was a huge mentor of mine on making. Uh, and he owned a, a bicycle company here where he made bikes that were shipped all over the world and really humble, had an alternative education route as well. Um, and it's it's just great to see people try to dig their niche. Just find your niche within the group. It doesn't matter what they said you'd be good at or bad at. Just ignore it. Do what you want. And just encouraging people to be as authentic as possible. Just be authentic. There's no reward for pretending like you're part of one group rather than another, other than your own self-dissociation, I guess. Right. Be real. You have to be real. Be real. For sure. Well, how about we how about we do this? I've learned a lot about your where you're passionate about your career. I think you give some great advice there. Why don't we take a turn and talk about things outside of work? You cool with that? Yep. All right, cool. Now I'm excited. Now you mentioned you worked at a Harley place, so I'm, I'm gonna yeah. go there first. So I'm a Harley guy myself. So do you ride, or did you, or did, was that uh, just a really cool job to land? It was the only job I could land. Okay. Uh, and I'm from motorcycle people, and uh, I figured if I could get a job there, I'd have something to talk to them about. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> so it's a. Uh, it was good. I I loved getting a job there. I was in sales, which I think is an important thing for any young person to experience how difficult those positions are. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, that was intense and far more than I ever could have imagined, but it was incredible to be able to, I got my motorcycle license out of it. I learned how to negotiate. I learned how to 
uh, stand up for myself and stand up for other people and try to find the right way through. Um, it was an incredible experience. Very cool. Very cool. Well, you work for the right brand. There's only one kind, that's for sure. That's, that's a right. personal, personal opinion, but, uh, you know, anyway, we'll move on. What about it how? It was fun. The, the first, the first sale I ever made was I think to a, a woman after I got my license and she was like, I don't think I can do this. And I was like, if you take this bike on a test ride, I will go with you. Cause neither one of us had ridden on the road before. And I was like, if you take it out, I, I will take this bike out with you. We'll ride right beside each other to the truck stop and back. And so we did it and we got back and she was like, that was incredible. <laughs> like tears coming out of her face. And I was like, buy this motorcycle. She said, okay. <laughs> It's done. I love it. I love it. Awesome. It Great story. Now, how about just so what hobbies do you have then? What, what do you enjoy doing for fun? I enjoy m making postal mail for people that I care about. So I'll, I'll, I know it's weird, but I will sit there and I'll, I'll consider that person the whole time I'm making a card or a box or something. Basically, it's just, I'm, I'm a pretty big paper enthusiast. So I'll make them a personalized card and I basically just think about them while I'm doing that. And I just kind of send some good vibes their way. And I don't care what anybody says. If you get something in the mail, you feel like a million dollars. Oh, it's so, it's, it's super cool. I mean, for sure. I mean, we, I send some, something to every guest in the mail and just think about it. Everybody gets email. It just, it's probably no telling how many emails you've got since we've been talking. Uh, it's so impersonal. Uh, but when you get something in the mail and you get to have that sense of opening, I just know how my kids are when they get something from their grandparents, something like that. It's a big deal. You spend 65 cents and that person's day, it, whole month might be different. You know, all mm -hmm. you got to do is hand write something and hand write the address. It's, it's pretty great. It's a good payoff. Um, I also really like working in my yard. That's something that I really enjoy. I move okay. plants around. and I So like you're doing gar like gardening type work? I wish it was cool like that, but make it, it's just, it's just, I wish I could grow food, but I just keep growing flowers and I'll, I like to grow flowers to cut. Cause I like, when I visit people, I like to take them a vase of flowers. Okay. So those are, those are the, I like taking, I like taking rewards to other people. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now we also love to hear about family here on Eco Ask Why. So anything you'd like to share with us about your family? Absolutely. The whole reason that I'm here is because of the conversations that my mom and my dad, when they were married, used to have about um, the versus subject on blue collar and white collar careers. My mom had had her master's in English and my dad, uh, I think maybe took one semester at community college, but was a quality control manager for 40 years. And so their conversations back and forth on like what what pay is, what, how that functions, what you had to do to get there, what that debt process was, all of those things is a huge, uh, one is not better than the other. Pick the one that you want mm -hmm. because neither one is superior to the other. Every, both of them are needed and make sure you're choosing the one that you want and not what people are choosing for you. Right. Now they, they in the area of Lynchburg there where you're at? Yeah. So we're, I'm from, I grew up in Wythe County. So that's about an hour South of Roanoke. Okay. And so they're still down there and they're still doing their very different worlds. And uh, I, I'd like to think that they're encouraged by the things that I, that I picked up from those conversations. Well, I'm sure they are for sure. Thank you for sharing that as well. So, I mean, how about, you know, you, I, you're such a passionate person, anything you enjoy consuming for, for personal use, it could be YouTube podcasts, just books uh, that you think uh, other people might enjoy. Yeah, I I love podcasts. This is one of them. I really really enjoyed the the female engineers section for obvious reasons, but yeah. like I said, it wouldn't be obvious. But uh, I also enjoy a couple of other podcasts. They're pretty incredible to do while you're doing some of our more mindless tasks like washing dishes and things. Um, Ologies with Allie Ward is one that I'm pretty excited about always, and she's the one that says ask smart people dumb questions. Um, and I think that it's important to consume. I really like the non-music YouTube sections where they redo things, uh, of which I cannot remember any names of classically. But essentially, it's just a hyper-focused AMSR of people taking apart old lighters or old machines and then putting them back together as they restore them. That's pretty comforting, but it also teaches you a lot about materials and how those function and what uh, abrasives and adhesives and things like that should be used on what materials. Cool. And I love scientific illustrations. 
Right. Very nice. That's where it all started. And so books with any kind of machine drawings, that's something that I don't think you can look at enough. And especially anatomy and, and all those types of illustrations, I think are pretty incredible. Awesome. And I think now too, uh, TW Control, you guys have a podcast going as well. Yes. Yes, we do. It's pretty exciting. So a lot of those episodes end up being conversations that we've had uh, on the back end while we're building panels or working on a machine or yeah. or doing something like that, just kind of trying to conceptualize. Um, I told Tim, I said, that I can't, I can't just watch YouTube forever. That You got to have your screen on. That's not low key. Like I was like, I have to have an, an audio thing that I can just take with me and I'll think about it and then I'll look it up later. And go. so that was kind of how that was born was that it needed to be portable. I love it. I love it. You guys are doing wonderful work there. Wonderful stuff. So thank you thank for sharing you. that. And we'll make sure we put those links in our show notes too, so our, our listeners can check that out. So how about, uh, I, I like to do a lightning round just to get a little bit more insight to who you are. Uh, we'll go through some fun stuff here. So if you're willing to play, we'll, we'll jump right in. Let's do it. Cool. Cool. My favorite food. Uh, Carbs. Any carbs. Any kind of crunchy carb. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Haven't had that answer yet. You really threw me off with that one. Uh, so just any carb. I love it. I love it. How about adult yeah. beverage? Uh, I love plain seltzer water. Okay. Cool. Wow. How about uh, all-time favorite movie? Oh. Yeah. Did I tell you I worked at a video store for like five years? Uh-uh. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Yeah, I'll go ahead and we'll go. Big Fish is is always a classic. That's a good one. Okay. All right. How about uh, music? I love metal and techno. Metal and techno. All right. Top metal band. Ah, uh, Deftones. Deftones. All right. Okay. How about um, what's on your nightstand? Uh, a battery operated candle, and vitamins. Guilty pleasure. Britney Spears. Okay. <laughs> Did not Forever. see didn't see that one coming. I hear you. How about she bridges metal and techno? Okay. All right. How about um vacation? Somewhere you've been that you that, that you just think people need to go. A creek in the mountains. Forever. Got it. Got it. And last but not least, pets. Dogs or cats? dogs okay there's only one right answer okay good 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 so you, you survived I cats but I, I would love to get a refund <laughs> <laughs> i think that you know most most cat owners would uh, definitely agree with you there so <laughs> thank you for playing the lightning round that was one of the funnest lightning rounds we've ever had uh just just love it. and i love this whole conversation mary it's been it's been a just a blast to get to know you we wrap up eco ask why with the why it talks about your passion. So if somebody wants to know, hey, Mary, what is your personal why? What would that be? Manual literacy. Manual literacy. Perfect. Perfect. Well, great. This has been wonderful for our listeners. Check out the show notes. You'll find ways to connect directly with Mary, as well as some of those, uh, those, those other resources that she talked about. Make sure you go, go eat your carbs like she does. Uh, enjoy that. Enjoy them. And uh, Mary, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you very much for having me. I've enjoyed this. Cool. You have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.